The Celtic nations are territories in Western Europe where Celtic languages or cultural traits have survived. The term, nation, is used in its original sense to mean a people who share a common identity and culture and are identified with a traditional territory. The six territories widely considered Celtic nations are Brittany, Brige, Cornwall, Curnow, Wales, Cymru, Scotland, Alba, Ireland, Eyre, and the Isle of Man, Manon or Ellen Vannon, commonly referred to as the Celtic fringe. In each of the six nations a Celtic language is spoken, Britonic or Brythonic languages are spoken in Brittany, Cornwall, and Wales, while Goidelic or Gaelic languages are spoken in Scotland, Ireland, and the Isle of Man. Before the expansions of ancient Rome and the Germanic and Slavic tribes, a significant part of Europe was dominated by Celts, leaving behind a legacy of Celtic cultural traits. Territories in northwestern Iberia, particularly Galicia, northern Portugal and Asturias, historically referred to as Galicia and Astures, covering north-central Portugal and northern Spain—are considered Celtic nations due to their culture and history. Unlike the others, however, no Celtic language has been spoken there in modern times. A genetics study from an Oxford University research team in 2006 claimed that the majority of Britons, including many of the English, are descended from a group of tribes which arrived from Iberia around 5000 BC, prior to the spread of Celts into Western Europe. However, three major genetic studies in 2015 have instead shown that haplogroup R1b in Western Europe, most common in traditionally Celtic-speaking areas of Atlantic Europe like Ireland and Brittany, would have largely expanded in massive migrations from the Indo-European homeland, the Yamnaya culture in the Pontic-Caspian steppe, during the Bronze Age along with carriers of Indo-European languages like Proto-Celtic. Unlike previous studies, large sections of autosomal DNA were analyzed in addition to paternal Y-DNA markers. They detected an autosomal component present in modern Europeans which was not present in Neolithic or Mesolithic Europeans, and which would have been introduced into Europe with paternal lineages R1b and R1a, as well as the Indo-European languages. This genetic component, labeled as Yamnaya, in the studies, then mixed to varying degrees with earlier Mesolithic hunter-gatherer and or Neolithic farmer populations already existing in Western Europe. Six Celtic nations Each of the six nations has its own Celtic language. In Wales, Ireland, Brittany, and Scotland these have been spoken continuously through time, while Cornwall and the Isle of Man have languages that were spoken into modern times but later died as spoken community languages. In the latter two regions, however, language revitalization movements have led to the adoption of these languages by adults and produced a number of native speakers. Ireland, Wales, Brittany, and Scotland contain areas where a Celtic language is used on a daily basis. In Ireland, the area is called the Gaeltacht on the west coast, Y Fro Jimrag in Wales, and in Brittany, Bryge Isle. Generally, these communities are in the west of their countries and in more isolated upland or island areas. The term Gaedhelthid historically distinguished the Gaelic-speaking areas of Scotland the Highlands from the Lowland Scots i.e. Anglo-Saxon speaking areas. More recently, this term has also been adopted as the Gaelic name of the Highland Council area, which includes non-Gaelic-speaking areas. Hence, more specific terms such as Sagir Gedlig, Gaelic-speaking area, are now used. In Wales, the Welsh language is a core curriculum compulsory subject, which all pupils study. Additionally, 20% of school children in Wales go to Welsh medium schools, where they are taught entirely in the Welsh language. In the Republic of Ireland, all school children study Irish as one of the three core subjects up until the end of secondary school, and 7.4% of primary school education is through Irish medium education, which is part of the Gaelscoil movement. Other territories Parts of the northern Iberian Peninsula, namely Galicia, Chantabria, Asturias and northern Portugal, also lay claim to this heritage. Musicians from Galicia and Asturias have participated in Celtic music festivals, such as the Ortigueras Festival of Celtic World in the village of Ortiguera or the Breton festival Interceltique de l'Orient, which in 2013 celebrated the year of Asturias. Northern Portugal, part of ancient Galicia Galicia, Minho, Douro and Tras os Montes, also has traditions quite similar to Galicia. 
However, no Celtic language has been spoken in northern Iberia since probably the early Middle Ages. Irish was once widely spoken on the island of Newfoundland before largely disappearing there by the early 20th century. Vestiges remain in some words found in Newfoundland English, such as scrob for scratch and Slovene for rascal. There are no fluent speakers of Scottish Gaelic in Newfoundland or Labrador today. Knowledge seems to be largely restricted to memorised passages, such as traditional tales and songs. Canadian Gaelic dialects of Scottish Gaelic are still spoken by Gaels in other parts of Atlantic Canada, primarily on Cape Breton Island and adjacent areas of Nova Scotia. In 2011, there were 1,275 Gaelic speakers in Nova Scotia, and 300 residents of the province considered a Gaelic language to be their mother tongue. Patagonian Welsh is spoken principally in YWLADFA in the Chubut province of Patagonia with sporadic speakers throughout Argentina by Welsh Argentines. Estimates of the number of Welsh speakers range from 1,500 to 5,000. Celtic languages the chart below shows the population of each Celtic nation and the number of people in each nation who can speak Celtic languages. The total number of people residing in the Celtic nations is 19,596,000 people and, of these, the total number of people who can speak the Celtic languages is approximately 2,818,000 or 14.3%. One the flag of the Republic of Ireland is used by the Celtic League to represent Ireland, although there is no universally accepted flag for the whole of the island. Of the languages above, three belong to the Goidelic or Gaelic branch Irish, Scottish Gaelic and Manx and three to the Brythonic or Britonic branch Welsh, Cornish and Breton. Their names for each other in each language shows some of the similarities and differences. Topic: Celtic identity. Topic. Formal cooperation between the Celtic nations is active in many contexts, including politics, languages, culture, music and sports. The Celtic League is an inter-Celtic political organization, which campaigns for the political, language, cultural and social rights, affecting one or more of the Celtic nations. Established in 1917, the Celtic Congress is a non-political organization that seeks to promote Celtic culture and languages and to maintain intellectual contact and close cooperation between Celtic peoples. Festivals celebrating the culture of the Celtic nations include the Festival Interceltique de l'Orient Brittany, the Pan-Celtic Festival Ireland, Celtfest Cuba Havana, Cuba, the National Celtic Festival Port Arlington, Australia, the Celtic Media Festival showcasing film and television from the Celtic nations, and the Eisteddfod Wales. Inter-Celtic music festivals include Celtic Connections Glasgow, and the Hebrida and Celtic Festival Stornoway. Due to immigration, a dialect of Scottish Gaelic, Canadian Gaelic is spoken by some on Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia, while a Welsh-speaking minority exists in the Chubut province of Argentina. Hence, for certain purposes—such as the festival Interceltique de l'Orient, Galicia, Asturias, and Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia are considered three of the nine Celtic nations. Competitions are held between the Celtic nations in sports such as rugby union, Pro 14 formerly known as the Celtic League, Athletics Celtic Cup and Association Football the Nations Cup — also known as the Celtic Cup, the Republic of Ireland enjoyed a period of rapid economic growth between 1995–2007, leading to the use of the phrase Celtic Tiger to describe the country. Aspirations for Scotland to achieve a similar economic performance to that of Ireland's led the Scotland First Minister Alex Salmond to set out his vision of a Celtic lion economy for Scotland, in 2007. Terminology The term, "'Celtic Nations' derives from the linguistic studies of the 16th-century scholar George Buchanan and the polymath Edward Lhuyd. As assistant keeper and then keeper of the Ashmolean Museum, Oxford 1691 Lhuyd travelled extensively in Great Britain, Ireland and Brittany in the late 17th and early 18th centuries. Noting the similarity between the languages of Brittany, Cornwall and Wales, which he called P. Celtic or Brythonic, the languages of Ireland, the Isle of Man and Scotland, which he called Q. Celtic 
or Goidelic, and between the two groups, Lhuyd published Archaeologia Britannica, an account of the languages, histories and customs of Great Britain, from travels through Wales, Cornwall, Ba Britannia, Ireland and Scotland in 1707. His Archaeologia Britannica concluded that all six languages derived from the same root. Lhuyd theorized that the root language descended from the languages spoken by the Iron Age tribes of Gaul, whom Greek and Roman writers called Celtic. Having defined the languages of those areas as Celtic, the people living in them and speaking those languages became known as Celtic too. There is some dispute as to whether Lude's theory is correct. Nevertheless, the term, Celtic, to describe the languages and peoples of Brittany, Cornwall and Wales, Ireland, the Isle of Man and Scotland was accepted from the 18th century and is widely used today. These areas of Europe are sometimes referred to as the Celt Belt or Celtic Fringe because of their location generally on the western edges of the continent, and of the states they inhabit e.g. Brittany is in the northwest of France, Cornwall is in the southwest of Great Britain, Wales in western Great Britain and the Gaelic-speaking parts of Ireland and Scotland are in the west of those countries. Additionally, this region is known as the «Celtic Crescent» because of the near-crescent-shaped position of the nations in Europe. <laughs> Territories of the ancient Celts During the European Iron Age, the ancient Celts extended their territory to most of Western and Central Europe and part of Eastern Europe and Central Anatolia. The continental Celtic languages were extinct by the early Middle Ages, and the continental Celtic cultural traits, such as an oral traditions and practices like the visiting of sacred wells and springs, largely disappeared or, in some cases, were translated. Since they no longer have a living Celtic language, they are not included as Celtic nations. Nonetheless, some of these countries have movements claiming a Celtic identity. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Iberian Peninsula. Topic: <inaudible> The Iberian Peninsula was an area heavily influenced by Celtic culture, particularly the ancient region of Galicia, about the modern region of Galicia and Braga. Viana do Castelo, Douro, Porto, and Braganca in Portugal and the Asturian region Asturias, Leon, Zamora in Spain. Only France and Britain have more ancient Celtic place names than Spain and Portugal combined Cunliffe and Coke 2010 and 2012. Some of the Celtic tribes recorded in these regions by the Romans were the Galaeci, the Bracari, the Astures, the Cantabri, the Celtici, the Celtiberi, the Tumorgogi, Albion and Serbarchi. The Lusitanians are categorized by some as Celts, or at least Celticized, but there remain inscriptions in an apparently non-Celtic Lusitanian language. However, the language had clear affinities with the Galician Celtic language. Modern-day Galicians, Asturians, Cantabrians and Northern Portuguese claim a Celtic heritage or identity. Although the Celtic cultural traces are as difficult to analyze as in the other former Celtic countries of Europe, because of the extinction of Iberian Celtic languages in Roman times, Celtic heritage is attested in toponymics and language substratum, ancient texts, folklore and music. At the end, late Celtic influence is also attributed to the 5th-century Romano-Britain colony of Brytonia in Galicia. 10th century Middle Irish mythical history Labor Gabala Aran Irish, Liebhar Gabhala Aran credited Galicia as the point from where the Galaic Celts sailed to conquer Ireland. England In Celtic languages, England is usually referred to as Saxon land. Sasana, Pau Saus, Bro Saoz etc., and in Welsh as Logar though the Welsh translation of English also refers to the Saxon root, Saesneg, with the English people being referred to as Saizan or Saes in the singular. The mildly derogatory Scottish Gaelic term Sassanach derives from this source. However, spoken Cumbric survived until approximately the 12th century, Cornish until the 18th century, and Welsh within the Welsh marches, notably in Archenfield, now part of Herefordshire, until the 19th century. Both Cumbria and Cornwall were traditionally Brythonic in culture. Cornwall existed as an independent state for some time after the foundation of England, and Cumbria originally retained a great deal of autonomy within the Kingdom of Northumbria. 
The unification of the Anglian Kingdom of Northumbria with the Cumbric Kingdom of Cumbria came about due to a political marriage between the Northumbrian King Oswu and Queen Riemelt Rienfelt in Old Welsh, a then Princess of Rege. Movements of population between different parts of Great Britain over the last two centuries, with industrial development and changes in living patterns such as the growth of second home ownership, have greatly modified the demographics of these areas, including the Isles of Scilly off the coast of Cornwall, although Cornwall in particular retains unique cultural features, and a Cornish self-government movement is well established. Brythonic and Cumbric placenames are found throughout England but are more common in the west of England than the east, reaching their highest density in the traditionally Celtic areas of Cornwall, Cumbria and the areas of England bordering Wales. Name elements containing Brythonic topographic words occur in many areas of England, such as, caer fort", as in the Cumbrian city of Carlisle, pen hill", as in the Cumbrian town of Penrith and Pendle Hill in Lancashire, Affan river" as in the rivers Avon in Warwickshire, Devon and Somerset, and Mynath Mountain", as in Long Mynd in Shropshire. The name, Cumbria, is derived from the same root as Cymru, the Welsh name for Wales, meaning, the land of comrades. <laughs> Formerly Gaulish regions most French people identify with the ancient Gauls and are well aware that they were a people that spoke Celtic languages and lived Celtic ways of life. Nowadays, the popular nickname Gaulois people, is very often used to mean «stock French people» to make the difference with the descendants of foreigners in France. Walloons occasionally characterize themselves as «Celts», mainly in opposition to the «Teutonic», «Flemish» and «Latin». French identities. Others think they are Belgian, that is to say Germano-Celtic people different from the Gaulish-Celtic French. The ethnonym Walloon derives from a Germanic word meaning foreign, cognate with the words Welsh and Vlach. The name of Belgium, home country of the Walloon people, is cognate with the Celtic tribal names Belge and possibly the Irish legendary Fir Bolg. Italian peninsula The Conegrate culture 13th century BC may represent the first migratory wave of the Proto-Celtic population from the northwest part of the Alps that, through the Alpine passes, had already penetrated and settled in the western Po Valley between Lake Maggiore and Lake Como it has also been proposed that a more ancient Proto-Celtic presence can be traced back to the beginning of the Middle Bronze Age 16th–15th century BC, when northwestern Italy appears closely linked regarding the production of bronze artifacts, including ornaments, to the western groups of the Tumulus culture Central Europe, 1600 BC to 1200 BC. Litane cultural material appeared over a large area of mainland Italy, the southernmost example being the Celtic helmet from Canossa di Puglia. Italy is home to the Lepontic, the oldest attested Celtic language from the 6th century BC. Anciently spoken in Switzerland and in northern central Italy, from the Alps to Umbria. According to the Rechiel des Inscriptions Gaulois, more than 760 Gaulish inscriptions have been found throughout present day France with the notable exception of Aquitaine and in Italy, which testifies the importance of Celtic heritage in the peninsula. The French and Arpidan-speaking Aosta Valley region in Italy also presents a claim of Celtic heritage. The Northern League Autonomous Party often exalts what it claims are the Celtic roots of all Northern Italy or Padania. Reportedly, Friuli also has a claim to Celticity recent studies have estimated that about one-tenth of Friulian words are of Celtic origin, also, a lot of typical Friulian traditions, dances, songs and mythology are remnants of the culture of Carnian tribes who lived in this area during the Roman Age and the early Middle Ages. Some Friulians consider themselves and their region as one of the Celtic nations Central and Eastern European regions Celtic tribes inhabited land in what is now southern Germany and Austria. Many scholars have associated the earliest Celtic peoples with the Hallstatt culture. The Boi, the Scordici, and the Vindelici are some of the tribes that inhabited Central Europe, including what is now Slovakia, Serbia, Croatia, Poland and the Czech Republic as well as Germany and Austria. 
The boy gave their name to Bohemia. The boy founded a city on the site of modern Prague, and some of its ruins are now a tourist attraction. There are claims among modern Czechs that the Czech people are as much descendants of the boy as they are from the later Slavic invaders as well as the historical Germanic peoples of Czech lands. This claim may not only be political. According to a 2000 study by Semino, 35.6% of Czech males have Y chromosome haplogroup R1b, which is common among Celts but rare among Slavs. Celts also founded Singidunum near present day Belgrade, though the Celtic presence in modern day Serbian regions is limited to the far north, mainly including the historically at least partially Hungarian Vojvodina. The modern day capital of Turkey, Ankara, was once the centre of the Celtic culture in central Anatolia, giving the name to the region Galatia. The Letone culture named for a region in modern Switzerland succeeded the Hallstatt era in much of Central Europe. Celtic diaspora In other regions, people with a heritage from one of the Celtic nations also associate with the Celtic identity. In these areas, Celtic traditions and languages are significant components of local culture. These include the permanent North American Gaeltacht in Tamworth, Ontario, Canada which is the only Irish Gaeltacht outside Ireland, the Chubut Valley of Patagonia with Welsh-speaking Welsh Argentines known as YWLADFA, Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia, with Scottish Gaelic-speaking Scottish Canadians, and southeast Newfoundland with traditionally Irish-speaking Irish Canadians. Also at one point in the 1900s there were well over 12,000 Gaelic Scots from the Isle of Lewis living in the eastern townships of Quebec, Canada, with place names that still exist today recalling those inhabitants. St. John, New Brunswick has often been called, "...Canada's Irish city." In the years between 1815, when vast industrial changes began to disrupt the old lifestyles in Europe, and Canadian Confederation in 1867, when immigration of that era passed its peak, more than 150,000 immigrants from Ireland flooded into St. John. Those who came in the earlier period were largely tradesmen, and many stayed in St. John, becoming the backbone of its builders. But when the Great Irish Potato Famine raged between 1845–1852, huge waves of famine refugees flooded these shores. It is estimated that between 1845 and 1847, some 30,000 arrived, more people than were living in the city at the time. In 1847, dubbed, ''Black 47'', one of the worst years of the famine, some 16,000 immigrants, most of them from Ireland, arrived at Partridge Island, the immigration and quarantine station at the mouth of St. John Harbour. However, thousands of Irish were living in New Brunswick prior to these events, mainly in St. John. After the partitioning of the British colony of Nova Scotia in 1784, New Brunswick was originally named New Ireland with the capital to be in St. John. Large swathes of the United States of America were subject to migration from Celtic peoples, or people from Celtic nations. Irish speaking Irish Catholics congregated particularly in the East Coast cities of New York, Boston, and Philadelphia, and also in Pittsburgh and Chicago, while Scots and Ulster Scots were particularly prominent in the southern United States, including Appalachia. A legend that became popular during the Elizabethan era claims that a Welsh prince named Maddock established a colony in North America in the late 12th century. The story continues that the settlers merged with local Indian tribes, who preserved the Welsh language and the Christian religion for hundreds of years. However, there is no contemporary evidence that Prince Maddock existed. An area of Pennsylvania known as the Welsh Tract was settled by Welsh Quakers, where the names of several towns still bear Welsh names, such as Bryn Mawr, the Lower and Upper Gwynedd Townships, and Bala Kinwood. In the 19th century, Welsh settlers arrived in the Chubut River Valley of Patagonia, Argentina and established a colony called YWLADFA Spanish, Colonia Galesa. Today, the Welsh language and Welsh tea houses are common in several towns, many of which have Welsh names. Dolivan and Trelu are examples of Welsh towns. In his autobiography, the South African poet Roy Campbell recalled his youth in the Dargal Valley, near the city of Pietermaritzburg, where people spoke only Gaelic and Zulu. In New Zealand, the southern regions of Otago and Southland were settled by the Free Church of Scotland. 
Many of the place names in these two regions, such as the main cities of Dunedin and Invercargill and the major river, the Clutha, have Scottish Gaelic names, and Celtic culture is still prominent in this area. In addition to these, a number of people from Canada, the United States, Australia, South Africa, and other parts of the former British Empire have formed various Celtic societies over the years. Topic. See also. Topic. Topic. References. Topic. Topic. Further reading. Topic. O'Neill, Tom. March 2006. The Celtic Realm. National Geographic. Retrieved July 30, 2013. They're also known for their bravery. Topic. External links Topic. Celtic Nations at Curlie Celtic League The Celtic Realm Celtic World – Net – Various information on Celtic culture and music. "'National Geographic Map – The Celtic Realm", PDF. 306 KB Simon James Ancient Celts page an article on Celtic realms by Jim Gilchrist of the Scotsman The Celtic Nations Association